Hello everyone to my floor. <laughs> so today I'm going to be doing a bronzer and highlighter collection video. I like to do these every year. Starting about this time of year, I start to do collection videos, going through all the stuff I have and really doing kind of a deep dive into why I appreciate all these different formulas. My collection of bronzers and highlighters, which is what I'm tackling today, has significantly um, grown since the last time I did one of these videos. However, I would still say I have kind of a curated collection. Maybe the highlighters are getting a little out of control, but especially bronzers, I would still say are pretty curated. But I'm excited to talk about these formulas and why they are so good. Uh, I have to tell you what I'm drinking. I'm actually almost due for a refill. Look at that, I'm down in there of my Earl Grey tea. Perhaps let's start with bronzers. <laughs> but move these highlighters to the side. Let's start with the flower bronzer. So. If you guys are not new to my channel, you know that for the longest time I resisted uh, buying bronzers, trying bronzers, and I think it's because back in the day when I used bronzer, it was probably 2003, and it was the type of thing you put all over your face. You didn't really worry about placement. It was just something to really kind of warm up your face. Now bronzer, it's very much, I feel like it's kind of used to sculpt the face a bit more, and I personally, I was always afraid that I would do it wrong. Like, I know there were times where I would see um, an individual wearing bronzer where I felt like it didn't look good and I didn't want to be that person <laughs> So I really just resisted bronzer. Well, this was the first bronzer. I finally tried a friend of mine was urging me to try it because she thought I would really like the formula and this got me into bronzer again, so flower beauty I feel like Flower Beauty is one of those brands that whenever people do dupe videos, they have some of the nicest formulas that are so similar to high-end formulas. It gets mentioned all the time. I have seen this mentioned several times as dupes to high-end bronzers. And while I haven't tried those specific high-end bronzers, I would say that this is a very, very good formula. So if this is the Heat Wave Luminous Bronzer. I have the shade Stunner, or no, I'm sorry, Sunrise. And there's only two shades in this bronzer, which is disappointing. Hopefully they expand the range because it is very, very good. So you can see it is a marbled baked formula. And the particular shade of this is interesting because it's pretty cool toned. It has definitely some luminosity to it. But when I wear it, it actually, because you know, I don't have a pink undertone. So something that's kind of pinky like this, it doesn't look super, super pink on me, It but it does kind of look blushy. This is one of those formulas I can wear as both a bronzer and a blush. And I think one of the reasons why it's so good is because it is sheer enough so that you don't have to worry about, you know, instantly kapow accidentally applying too much bronzer, but it's not so sheer that you're constantly dipping into it to get more. Like it, it, it definitely does show up on the skin, but if you're like me, fairly light skinned and you have a hard time finding a bronzer that you think isn't too much, I think that this is a really good place to start and the formula is really, really pretty. Let's talk about these e.l.f. bronzers real quick. So a friend of mine actually bought all the shades <laughs> and we were talking about bronzer. I was telling her how I wanted bronzers that weren't super pigmented and she just gave me a couple of shades. So she gave me a warm shade and a cool shade and I actually do really like this. So this is, let's start with the warm one. This is the shade Honey Drip. So this is very different from the Flower Beauty one, first of all, in the fact that it's a cream, but it's also matte. So that actually can be very, very helpful for me when I, will, I wear a lot of glowy products and it's nice just to add something that's not super glowy. Obviously this one is more warm toned, but I still would not say it makes me look orange. And it's sheer enough to where if I accidentally get too much, it blends out easily and I don't ever have a problem. I feel like wearing too much bronzer. So that's the shade Honey Drip. And then the shade Feelin' Shady is actually very, very cool toned. This is definitely a contoury shade, which I have never really gotten into contour. So I think it's actually a really fun way to try it out with something that's as sheer as this one. I appreciate how sheer it is, so I don't go too overboard. If you're someone who's new to cream bronzer, I don't know, I feel like these, it's worth a shot. They're very inexpensive and I, and I like them. I think they're good. Um, this one from Tarte, this is actually a mini of the Park Avenue Princess Bronzer. And I think there's two versions of this bronzer. I think there's the matte one and the glowy one. Mine is the glowy one. And this is in my project pan, hence the gigantic <laughs> pan in there, but this is another luminous bronzer that is a little bit more warm than cool, but I would say it's 
definitely not orange it leans golden and I think it's pretty I like it it's probably not something when I finish it I'll repurchase just because there's so many that would be fun to try and I just really don't want a gigantic <laughs> bronzer collection but I, I do have a few things I would like to try but in the meantime finishing this up I think it's nice I think this is one that it's definitely middle of the road in terms of not being too pigmented or not so yeah this is one I have no problem using and let's talk about my one high-end bronzer. So I'm really, again, I'm into the sheer bronzer look, so I was really interested when this was released. This is the Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Enhancer, and I purchased the shade Light, which is the lightest shade, and this really is really, 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 I don't know if I can overstate how sheer this is. And it's also very glowy, but at the same time, strangely long-wearing. I don't know how but it blends into the skin beautifully. Like this isn't something that you're gonna end up with like lines of bronzer on your face. It is really, really pretty. But at the same time, like I mentioned, glowy, so that's something to keep in mind. But glowy in the sense of more skincare glow, not sparkles. Oh my goodness, that is so pretty. And the formula is much more emollient than say the e.l.f. one. This one's pretty easy to just slap on. <laughs> it's pretty hard to mess up. And uh, I really enjoy it. I really like it. So that is my little bronzer collection. Not a whole lot to talk about there, but uh, let's move on to highlight. All right, so we definitely have a few more things to talk about here. I feel like I discovered highlighter last year. Before that, I actually was pretty anti-highlighter. I've always had more oily skin, <laughs> and so I was always like, why would I add more shine to my skin? I don't understand. Well, now I do, okay? I understand, <laughs> and I think that uh, highlighter can be absolutely stunning. So I have collected quite a few at this point. Let's just start down here in the corner. So this is in the Makeup Geek little compact, but this is actually a single from Sydney Grace. And as you can see, I have dropped it and it has shattered, but I try to be super careful with this one. I don't have anything else like this. As you can see, it is very purple and cool toned. I normally would not go for a purple highlighter. However, at certain times of the winter, it is super fun to play around with a very, very cool toned highlighter like this. It is very, very pigmented. I barely dip my brush into this. Like this is pretty much an eyeshadow, I feel like. But yeah, so I barely dip my brush into this when uh, I am using it. But for those very rare occasions when I want it, I love it, which is why I keep it around. I don't often hang on to things that I only use a few times a year, but this is one of those things <laughs> that uh, I do. Okay, here's another one from Sydney Grace. This is actually a loose highlighter. This is the shade Candied Peach. I think I actually prefer their loose highlighter formula than to the pressed one, just because I guess I don't even know why. But this shade is such a beautiful peach. Again, it's very different from any other highlighter I have in my collection. I tend towards more champagne-y stuff. So these two have more color than I would usually go for. Oh, it is so pretty, especially in the summer and the fall. If you don't mind, you know, messing around with a loose highlighter, they can be difficult in terms of just messiness <laughs> and, and not trying to get too much because it is very pigmented. I use, again, the tiniest little bit of this. But if you like loose highlighter, I would absolutely recommend the one from Sydney Grace. It's really good. While it's obviously glowy, there's no big giant sparkles. It's very smooth. Okay, let's talk about one of my favorite formulas from Merit. Now, these were sent to me for review purposes, so I want to make sure I, you know, clear on that, but I love them. So this is one I had in a project pan, which is why it's so flat, <laughs> but this is the shade Kava. The Merit Highlight looks just like skincare, skincare glow. Look at that. Very, very easy to use. Kind of hard to overdo. Although you, you can. You can definitely build it up till it gets super, super shiny looking. But yeah, it just looks like skincare glow and I cannot recommend it enough. I think it is so pretty. But anyway, that was the shade Kava. I also have the shade Citrine, which was released this year. And Citrine, again, same thing. It's just skincare glow, but it has a little bit more peachiness to it. And sitting here in this light, it actually looks more peachy than it does usually. Let me try and blend that out a little bit. I feel like it just meshes so well with my skin tone. Oh, truly, 
truly, truly glorious. For, now, if you're looking for something that's similar to the Merit in terms of looking like skincare glow, but you don't want to pay Merit prices, da -da -da, this one from Flower Beauty. I talk about this one a lot because I think it's so lovely. This is the Day Glow Highlighting Glaze in the shade Stunner. And this is just as easy to use as the Merit one, and it has very much the same effect of just looking like a skincare glow on your face. I personally don't think it's super sticky, but you know, it is a balm, so I guess it does have some stick to it, but I personally don't experience like my hair sticking to it or anything. Same with the Merit. Um, even though the, I wouldn't call either of them sticky in comparison, I would say the Merit um, is less sticky than the flower one, but I still recommend both of them. I think they're gorgeous. While well, I'm talking about flower, let's talk about this other one. So this one was released this year. This is the Spotlight Liquid Highlighter in the shade Opal. Everyone's been talking about how this is apparently a dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury one. I don't have that one, so I can't comment on that, but I can say that I really enjoy this. <laughs> it is very, very bright. Like when you just first swatch it, it looks pretty intense, but it's one of those that blends out really easily so that you can get, you know, a much more low-key glow. And it doesn't have any big, giant, chunky sparkles. It's very, very smooth. It's lovely. It's really pretty. I'm glad I tried it. I don't think that these type of wands, just using it, it is like my favorite way to apply highlighter. I think I prefer a pan, but I do think it's beautiful. All right, moving along here. Let's talk about my NARS highlighter. This is a classic highlighter. This is the shade <laughs> that's very difficult for people who speak English to pronounce correctly. To us, it looks like Fort de France, <laughs> but that's made fun of a lot. It's supposed to be something like Fort de France or something. I try, but please don't make fun of me. <laughs> Anyway, this is my project pan. In the pan, it looks pretty golden, and it is one of my more golden highlights, but it's still not super, super yellow. And getting a good swatch of this one is hard because it can be kind of a more low-key highlighter, but at the same time, if you are mindlessly applying it, all of a sudden, you'll be like, whoa, I've got a lot of highlight on. So it's one of those that will easily build, but you can see from the tone there how it's a little bit more gold. If you like a low-key highlighter without sparkles, and if you're after more, uh, you, want, you, like, you prefer a powder highlighter versus cream, I really think it's pretty. It's really, really good. I do have one Becca highlighter. Becca, as we all know, sadly out of business, but Smashbox has picked up a couple of their products, and I think, I don't know if it's out yet, but I thought that they said that this shade would be coming back. This is Rose Quartz, and this is a special edition one. It was some collaboration. I'm, I'm not positive, but that's why there's like the flowers pressed in there. But this is my, I think it's my only pink highlighter. It's really pretty. I do find myself usually going for more champagne highlighters, but I think it's really pretty, really easy to use. I admit I don't really get the extreme hype that people had for these, but I think it might just it just might be the fact that I'm not into pink highlighter. <laughs> Maybe if I tried one of the more champagne shades, I'd be super into it. But uh, yeah, I do think it's pretty, but I don't often reach for pink. Okay, let's talk about this one from Phytosurgeons. Phytosurgeons has a super interesting formula for their highlighter, and it's very, very different from anything else out there. I don't think I've ever seen anything else like it. So it's a it's a cream, but it's a very hard cream. Like it literally feels like a dried out product, but that's what it's supposed to feel like. You'd use a very kind of dense brush and you really, really swirl around in there before you actually pick up any product. And when you do apply it, it doesn't have any sparkle. It creates just kind of a gentle radiance that also mattifies at the same time. Like it's kind of an interesting product. I have the shade Spectral Shine, which is their, no, 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 it's not, that's not the shade. They're, this is what the product is called. The shade I have is Fresh Fog. But I'm going to try and swirl my finger in there to get a swatch. It's not the easiest thing to do since it's such like a hard product. There, you can see what it looks like. And when I get it applied on my face, I find that I do like it. You can see it's very, very bright in terms of its whiteness like it's definitely a winter shade for me I would say just because of I don't know the type of hard formula that it is and how I sometimes have a hard time getting it on my skin it's not my favorite formula 
but whenever I do accomplish getting it on, I really like how it looks. Like if you're like anti-sparkle, <laughs> this is like probably the ultimate formula for you. I might target this for project panning. This is one of those products, it's funny to sit there and swirl with your brush because that's what you're supposed to do anyway. <laughs> it's like mindlessly swirling. But anyway, this is, yeah, it's a fun product, but probably not my very favorite formula. But you can see what I mean on my hand there, how it's definitely on my skin, but it's pretty low key. Something interesting that I found out about this Laura Geller highlight. So this is the baked original highlighter and this is a duo with French Poodle and French Almond. This side with French Poodle actually does something kind of similar in the how it both highlights and mattifies at the same time like that one does from Phytosurgence. I find that's just because this one's easier for me to apply. I prefer this one but this has got to be the most gentle highlight like it's absolutely glorious absolutely <laughs> why did i say it like that absolutely <laughs> but i feel like like this is probably the highlighter for mature skin because it doesn't add dewiness it doesn't add any sparkle it just truly adds a bit of lightness like it's truly really hard to describe why i think this is so beautiful it's a beautiful formula it's kind of powdery so i keep adding this to them i'm trying to think of words to describe it like when i turn my hand and i feel like i'm having a hard time catching it on camera there's definitely radiance there but it's not causing any sort of like true shininess if you know what i mean this shade over here this is pretty iffy for me if i can use this shade it's almost too dark i feel like if i just use a little bit i can pull it off but that one's definitely more peachy but still a beautiful formula i think this is really pretty it's really good all right we're down to my last three three of my most favorite products let's talk about this from mac i got this at tj maxx and i keep seeing it there if you want to try this i definitely be on the lookout for it at tj maxx so this is the extra dimension skin finish in the shade double gleam this is not a low-key highlight <laughs> um it definitely has a lot of glow oh my goodness I love it. <laughs> it's another one of those I kind of have to go in gently because I don't want an intense highlight a lot of times, but I just love the shine. Again, no chunky sparkles, very, very smooth. Oh my goodness, it is truly stunning. I highly recommend. It's really good. Kind of along the same lines, this one from Nabla, this is another baked formula and Oh, it creates the most beautiful glass skin finish. I like to really buff this one into my skin. Oh my goodness, just... Oh. So many highlights. It's kind of a thing where they're the same but different. You know what I mean? <laughs> These two are definitely probably the most intense highlights in my collection. And I love them. I love, 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 love them. I'm going to say the same thing about this one as I did about this one. Very smooth, no chunky glitter. You can get super intense glow if you want, or you can keep it pretty low key just by being, you know, light handed, but oh, stunning. And this one from ColourPop. I have mentioned this so often on my channel over the past couple of years. It's so good and it's a classic. So this is the shade Lunch Money in the Super Shock formula. It has that delightful bouncy texture that ColourPop is known for, but for some reason, these do not dry out as fast. I'm trying to look for a spot here. Oh. Goodness. It does not dry out as fast as like the Super Shock blushes do. And this is one of their more low-key highlights in terms of it doesn't have chunks of glitter. Some of their other ones do, so you have to be careful which shade you get. This shade, Lunch Money, no chunky glitter, and it's not as bright as, say, the shade Flexitarian. I'm feeling like that's not the best swatch there with the light. Let me see if I can get one maybe on my hand here so you can see it a little bit better. There, yeah. So you can see it's like not as bright as these, but still has a beautiful glow. Again, no chunkiness. This is another one that when you buff it into your skin, it kind of just looks like your skin is glowing. Like you are very, very healthy. And because it's ColourPop, it's very affordable. I highly recommend it. All right, so there we have my bronzer and highlighter collection for the year 2022. I really enjoy doing this, these kind of deep dives into my collection because it helps me appreciate what I have and not just want all the new things, especially this time of year during all the sales. <laughs> 
So if you guys watched till the end, thank you so much. I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me on my channel. Please make sure and let me know in the comment section your favorite bronzer, your favorite highlighter, and you know, you don't have to keep it to just one. I know I have a really hard time with that myself. <laughs> so favorites, let's just say that. Let me know your guys' favorites down below. I love hearing what everyone's favorites are. I will see you again very soon in the next one. Bye. Mm -hmm.